Well, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome to Reading Through the Bible with Elder Linda. So glad you joined me. We have a good lesson today. Uh, and if you remember um, last week, we were uh, in Matthew, we started Matthew chapter 24. And sorry for those that have, uh, this is your first time uh, coming aboard and uh, studying with us. Um, the purpose of this channel is for us to learn the scripture, for us to read the Bible and learn what it says and also to read all the way through the Bible, because uh, sometimes it's easier to do it if you have others that are reading with you. So that is what we're doing. We're reading the scripture. We're making sure we get an understanding of what we're reading. And then we make application to our lives as the Holy Spirit quickens us as to what to apply. Uh, also, I upload a new video every Wednesday, well, at least by Wednesday. It's usually up by Tuesday evening, but definitely by Wednesday. Uh, but uh, give me a thumb up, subscribe to the channel. And if you subscribe to the to the YouTube channel called Reading Through the Bible with Elder Linda, you'll be notified whenever there's a new video posted. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, that that is welcomed as well. So please feel free to comment, um, you know, and, and, you know, let me know if you're getting anything out of the Bible study. Uh, but last week we were on... Uh, Matthew chapter 24, we read verses 1 through 14. And in Matthew chapter 24 is where Jesus predicted um, the destruction of the temple. Remember, his disciples was telling him how beautiful the temple was. And look at how all these marvelous uh, buildings that uh, actually King Herod had um, had, had built. Because he was uh, good at building things. And this was one of his greatest works. He helped the Jews to renovate their temple. So uh, the disciples were showing off, you know, the, the beautiful building and Jesus told them that not one stone is going to be left on another. So he, he predicted the destruction of the temple because Jesus knew that for about 40 years from now, 70 AD, all this is going to be destroyed. Okay. Um, also, we talked about in Matthew chapter 24, how Jesus is answering a question that his disciples posed to him as to uh, what was the signs of the of the time and, and the signs of his coming, of his returning, and the signs of the end of the age. And so um, Jesus answered those questions. But today uh, we had talked about, we're gonna talk more about the tribulation because we want to, um, I want you to know what's, go what's, what, what's coming, what's happening, uh, what the book of Revelation says is going to happen to us. Um, during the great tribulation because sometimes you hear that term and you say tribulation is coming but i don't know how many of us have actually read some of the things that are going to take place on the day of tribulation on judgment day so that's what we're going to talk about today because i think we all should have an idea and uh uh not going to try and um explain away everything that we're reading in Revelation because to be honest with you, I don't think many of us know all the details and uh, exactly what the Spirit is saying in every single chapter in the book of Revelations. And God gives us insight. The Holy Spirit will give us insight and he gives us inklings of this and that. Uh, but basically what we're going to do is read about what is going to happen. And we're reading about it so that we, we, we're familiar with it. So when the Holy Spirit decides to enlighten us and give us a revelation about what he's talking about, he can. Because uh, I believe and um, many many believe this is, this is definitely gonna happen. I know it's gonna happen. Uh, what God wrote in the, in the book of Revelation uh, is going to happen. Jesus is gonna return. There is going to be a judgment day. So with all that in mind, we need to know what is going to happen. And also knowing what's going to happen, it might cause us to even make up our minds as to um, whether or not we want to serve the Lord, whether or not we want to give our hearts to the Lord, because we want to do it before it's too late. Amen. Amen. So before we jump in, let's just start with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God. We praise you. We honor you. Oh, God, we just give you our, our lives Lord, we just pray that you prepare us, Lord Jesus, for what's coming upon this earth. Open our eyes and our ears and our understanding. Lord, help us to hear your voice calling to each one of us. Lord, we want to be closer to you. 
We love you. We appreciate you. And we thank you for giving us this time to learn about your word and to learn about what's going to happen when you do come the second time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be, I'm going to be reading out of a book that I wrote a few years ago. Um, maybe around 2015, something like that. Um, no, it wasn't that, that, that long ago, maybe about three years ago. Uh, but it's called Nuggets to Live By. And in this book, I felt to write it for uh, fairly new Christians or for people that are just learning about God. So this is a really good book if you have a, a, a young person that's just learning about God or if you're new to um, at, to the Christian life and you want to know about God. So, you you know, and you can order it from Amazon.com uh, or anywhere books are sold. But I, in the last chapter of this book, uh, I gave some basic uh, pointers to new Christians, but I also wanted them to know about Judgment Day. So in the last chapter of this book, Actually, it, it stemmed from my son uh, in about 2015. Uh, my son was about 16 years old then, and he and I have a lot of conversations about the Lord, and he's always asking me questions about things in the Bible. And of course, when he asks me, it makes me go dig in and make sure I'm telling him the right thing. Uh, but he was asking about the book of Revelation, about the end time and the judgment day, and uh, what was going to be the sequence of the events that was going to take place on judgment day. And so in 2015, I got to digging because, you know, normally I, I wasn't really digging into the book of Revelation, but to give him a, the right answer, I did uh, go into the book of Revelations and I put it in, a, in this book uh, and it's called Judgment Day is Coming. It's chapter 11 of this book. Nuggets to live by. Because I think even as a new Christian, you still need to know what's going to happen on Judgment Day. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So we're going to start. And I, basically, I'm just going to read to you um, what I wrote to him, what I wrote to my son, so that he would know uh, what events were going to take place on Judgment Day. Now, when you go into the book of Revelations, the first few chapters, the first three chapters are letters that were written to uh, seven churches. And so we're going to actually start in, um, focus on chapter four. <clears throat> so in chapter four, so in this chapter, the apostle John saw a vision of God sitting on his throne, surrounded by 24 elders, crowned and wearing white robes. Lightning and thundering came from the throne. He saw seven lamps representing the seven spirits of God. And he also saw a sea of glass like crystal before the throne and four living creatures surrounded the throne. One creature looked like a lion, one looked like a calf, one like an eagle, and one had the face of a man. These creatures praised God continually and every time they did, the 24 elders would cast, down, cast their crowns before the throne and fall down and worship God. So this is all from chapter uh, four of Revelation. As, as God sat on the throne, he had a book in his hand that was sealed with seven seals. And the only person who was worthy to open the seals was Jesus, who had been slain. Jesus took the book out of God's hands. The 24 elders were also carrying golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So remember, God is listening because he had bowls of incense. The Lamb of God, who is Jesus, began to open the seven seals as follows. Now, remember what we're reading thus far. He was the only one that was worthy to open those seven seals. So now, um, and just as an overview, the, in uh, the book of Revelation, the, the tribulation is going to consist of Seven seals being opened, which we're just reading about just now that Jesus is going to be able to open. Then there's going to be seven trumpets that are going to sound, that are going to sound. And then the last judgment is going to be seven bowls or seven vials of God's wrath that's going to be poured out on the earth. And so this is what we're reading about. This is what we're calling the great tribulation. So the first seal opened. Now, Jesus was the only one able to open these seals. So I'm just going to read through it. Um, remember, this is a video, so you can stop it and pause it whenever you want. So I'm just going to basically just read it 
uh, so you can know what what is going to happen on Judgment Day. So in Revelation chapter six, it says the first um, the first seal was open. This was a white horse is released, representing Christ as the conqueror who conquers Satan. The second seal opened, and it was a red horse that was released to take peace away from the earth by bringing war. Then the third seal was opened. Jesus opened the third seal, and this was a black horse was released. And the black horse is to bring hunger and famine on the earth. Now, all this is judgment that is, that is actually going to happen on the earth. Then the uh, fourth seal is opened. And it's a pale horse is released to bring death by weapons, famine, and evil men. Then the fifth seal is opened. All the martyrs are seen with their cry to God to avenge them. They were told to rest a little while longer until others are killed the way they were. Now... It is believed, and I'm, I tend to believe this as well, that we are actually somewhere, and I'm talking about in 2023, we're actually somewhere between this fifth seal being opened and the sixth seal being opened. Because in the sixth seal, when the sixth seal is open, the opening of this seal brings cosmic disturbances such as earthquakes. Now, we know we've seen earthquakes, but, but we haven't seen this part here. It says the sun becomes black and the moon becomes like blood and the stars of heaven fall from the sky. Men will hide in caves and want the mountains to fall on them so that they can escape the wrath of God. We haven't quite seen that yet. So that's why I think we're, we're probably in that stage just before that seal is open, the sixth seal. Well, four angels, there'll be four angels at the four corners of the earth and they'll be ready to harm the earth. But they are told to wait until the seal of God has been placed in his servants' foreheads. Revelation 7. The 144,000, I know you've heard of 144,000, uh, were sealed in their foreheads. The rapture takes place. And this is all in Revelation chapter 7. So the rapture takes place. And, and like I said, we don't know specifically the exact time, the exact day, because only God knows when Jesus is actually going to come back and when he's going to rapture his church. But there will be a rapture taking place. Um, and it, it, I'm not sure if it's going to take place just, just before the 144,000 are sealed or right after, but there will be a rapture taking place where the church will be called up to meet him in the sky. So after the rapture takes place, the 144,000 are sealed. Um, the seventh seal is opened. The opening of this seal brought silence in heaven for half an hour in preparation for the trumpets that were coming next. An angel was holding a censer that contained the prayers of the saints. There was thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake also occurred at this time. So after the opening of the, of the seals comes seven trumpets sounded by seven angels. And it goes as follows. The first trumpet is going to sound, we're Revelation chapter 8. The first trumpet is going to sound. There's going to be hell and fire mixed with blood sent on the earth and destroys one third of the earth. One third of the trees and all the grass is destroyed by fire. The second trumpet sounded. A great mountain burning with fire is thrown into the sea and it kills one third of all sea creatures. One third of all ships are destroyed. And when it talks about a great mountain being thrown into the sea uh, with fire, it kind of gives you the, the, um, the vision picture of a volcano, you know, and I'm not sure if that's what it's going to be, but that's what kind of gives you the, because volcano, you know, mountains with fire, you know, volcanoes usually have fires blowing out of them if, when it's a volcano. Then the third trumpet sounded. A burning uh, star fell from heaven into the waters and turned one third of the waters bitter. Many men died after drinking the bitter water. Then the fourth trumpet sounded. One third of the sun, moon, and the stars are and the stars are struck, and the earth becomes dark. Then the fifth trumpet sounded. An angel opened the bottomless pit and released locusts or grasshoppers. And these are these are not just regular grasshoppers. They're going to be like uh, have uh, the ability to sting people like scorpions, because they were shaped like horses, had teeth like lions, and tails like scorpions with stings in them, and they were allowed to hurt men. All those, the people they were hurting were all those without the seal of God on their forehead for five months. So men longed to die to get away 
from the torment. So we, now we've been talking about the seal of God. So the seal of God, I believe, is the fact that you belong to him. The seal of God is that you gave your heart to him. And you're going to be sealed. He will seal all those that belong to him in their forehead. In verse, uh, I mean, in the six trumpet sounds, Revelation chapter 9, verse 13. The four angels that were prepared for this time were released to kill one third of mankind. It was an army of 200 million demonic inspired military forces. They destroyed men with fire, smoke, and brimstone. And after witnessing all this, now we've, we've had seven seals, which released all kinds of things on the earth. And then we're talking about these seven trumpets that are releasing all kinds of things on this earth. But after all this, after witnessing all this, the people that were not killed still refused to repent for their murders, their sorceries, their sexual immorality, and their thefts. So during this time, there's going to be a two witness, uh, two witness company uh, that are going to be given power to prophesy for three and a half years. Fire is going to come out of their mouth to kill anyone that tries to harm them. Uh, they, they will also be given power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain. They can turn water into blood. They can strike the earth with plagues as often as they need to. You find that in Revelation chapter 11. Then at the end of the three, uh, three and a half years, the beast will kill the witnesses. You're going to kill these two witnesses and they will lay in the street unburied for everybody to see for three and a half days. After the three and a half days, God will breathe life back into them. So they're going to be resurrected and they will stand on their feet with everyone watching and afraid. And God will take the two witnesses to heaven. Immediately after that, an earthquake will follow and will kill 7,000 people. And the rest of the people will be afraid and give God the glory. Then we have the seventh trumpet sounding. This is the last of the trumpets. In Revelation 11, 15, the 24 elders and then the 24 elders will then proclaim God's kingdom. There's going to be lightnings and noises, thunderings and earthquake. The great hail and great hail will follow the, pro the proclamation. Now, these are events that take place just prior to the bowls of wrath being poured out. Uh, there was a vision of a woman that had a child that she had to flee into the wilderness. Uh, and uh, war is going to break out in heaven. Uh, and because the beast could not get the woman, the beast will go after her seed because the woman will be uh, taken care of. Uh, it talks about a beast that rises from the sea like a leopard. And he's considered the Antichrist. Remember, you, I know you heard a lot of talk about the Antichrist. So there's going to be an Antichrist. The dragon gave him authority and he, wor and he worshiped the dragon. This beast granted permission to make war with the saints to overcome them. All whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb will worship the beast. The beast was, was finally wounded, and you've wounded, and that's Revelation 13, verse, uh, verse 1. Then the beast rises from the earth. This beast was also given authority and forced everyone to worship, to worship the beast from the sea. This beast also had power to perform signs uh, from heaven, fire from heaven. He killed all those that would not worship the image of the beast. So there's going to be a lot more saints murdered and martyred. He forces everyone to receive the mark of the beast on their right hand or in their forehead, and they would not be able to buy or sell. And the number of the beast is 666. I know you've heard that before. The 144,000 that were, were seen singing a song unto God that only they could sing. These were those who followed the lamb wherever he went. They were pure, undefiled, and redeemed. So then there'll be three angels that will appear and they will have a message. The first angel is going to have the message to fear God and give him glory. The second angel will declare Babylon the great is fallen. The third angel is going to be, be uh, going to declare, is going to warn that if the people take the mark of the beast, they will suffer in the lake that burn with fire with the beast forever in torment. So there's going to be warnings telling you, you, you don't want to burn with the beast or with the Antichrist. 
There'll be sickles thrust into the earth because it is time to reap the harvest. The grapes will be fully ripe. There'll be a sea of glass seen with overcomers playing harps and singing the song of Moses. So there's going to be a lot of things going on. Finally, this is the last judgment. Uh, finally, seven bowls containing God's wrath will be poured out on the earth by seven angels. So, you know, you, you see in these three sets of seven, the first seven seals, Jesus was the only one able to open that. Then the next seven, seven trumpets, the angels, seven angels are going to blow those trumpets. Now you have seven bowls of God's judgment that's going to be poured out on the earth. And this is going to be by the seven angels. So the first bowl poured out, and, you, and we're in Revelation chapter 16 now, uh, is where you can find this. The first bowl poured out uh, brought sores on all who had the mark of the beast. So those that had accepted what the beast wanted them to accept and had not accepted Christ, they're going to have sores placed on their body. The second bowl poured out turned the sea into blood and everything in the sea died. This is judgment day. Okay, this is this is God's judgment falling. The third bowl is poured out. This bowl turned all the rivers and the fountains into blood. The fourth bowl is poured out. This bowl caused the sun to scorch men with fire. But even after that, men still refuse to repent. So you're being scorched with fire and you still refuse to call upon the name of the Lord and to repent. Then the fifth bowl is poured out. Bowl of God's wrath. The throne of the beast and his kingdom became full of darkness and pain. They were biting their tongues because of the pain. Even with all that pain, men still refused to repent. And they blasphemed God because of their pain and their sores. So they were, they were mad, probably cursing at God because of their sores instead of saying, God, I repent. Then a sixth bowl is poured out. The river rephrase is dried up in preparation for the Battle of Armageddon. I know you heard of the great Battle of Armageddon that's coming. It's going to be between the uh, evil spirits and the angels, and it's going to be fighting. Also, the beast prepares for the battle. The demons are sent out who perform signs and gather their forces together for the great battle. Then the seven bowl is poured out. Loud voices were heard from heaven, and the greatest earthquake men ever have ever known took place every island will flee away mountains will be destroyed and great hell will fall on men and even with that still men will refuse to call upon the name of the lord then the following are some events recorded after the last bowl was poured out and before the millennial reign becomes uh begins so uh John saw a vision of a, of a woman, of the scarlet woman and the scarlet beast. The angel explained to John that he was what he was seeing. In the middle of the explanation, it was mentioned that 10 kings would unite under the power of the beast and they will make war with the Lamb of God and the faithful who are with him. And they, the kings, will be defeated. The beast will come against this woman to fulfill the, to fulfill the purpose of God. Then the harlot, Babylon the Great, will be judged by God and burned with fire. She had become the dwelling place of demons, and she was the source of fornication and made many rich in her luxury. Babylon's destruction came in one hour. That's Revelation 18. Revelation 19, it talks about the heavens rejoicing over the fall of Babylon. In 197, it talks about there's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb that's going to take place. Then also in chapter 19, John is shown a vision of Christ on a white horse. He has a sharp sword went, that went out of his mouth to strike the nations and to rule them with a rod of iron. The words King of Kings and Lord of Lords were written on his robe and on his thigh. Christ on the white horse fought against the beast. Remember the battle of Armageddon? He fought against the beast and the false prophets and captured them and threw them alive into a lake that burns with fire and the rest of their army were killed with the sword of Christ and birds were called on to feed on their flesh so this battle of Armageddon okay it's Christ destroyed um Christ destroyed them destroyed their armies and it said the uh the beast and the false prophet were thrown into the lake that burns with fire 
Okay, so now we're going to talk about, and we're almost finished here, talk about the millennial reign. Millennial reign is a thousand year period that we're going to read about. It says the devil is bound. So, okay, you got the beast and the false prophet that's thrown into the lake to burn with fire. Uh, Satan is bound. Satan is bound for a thousand years by an angel with a great chain. And he will be, he, he will later be released. But right now he's bound for a thousand years. Uh, now, John saw all the saints sitting on thrones, ruling, and he saw all the martyrs who did not worship the beast of, of his image and showed us those that kept faithful to God and who refused to take the mark of the beast were all living and reigning with Christ for a thousand years. That's the millennial reign you always hear about. And it's also the first resurrection. The second death, because remember they were martyrs, so God had resurrected them and they're reigning with him for a thousand years. All those that were killed in Christ or killed because of their, their faith, they're going to be resurrected. The second death will not affect these that have been in the first resurrection. And they will be priests of God and of Christ and reign with him for a thousand years. You can find in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. After a thousand years have ended, now remember, the beast and the Antichrist um, are in the lake that burns with fire. I mean, the beast and the false prophet are in the lake that burns with fire. So now, after a thousand, and, and the devil has been bound for a thousand years. So it's been a thousand years on the earth where we didn't have to, we didn't have to worry about the devil. We didn't have to worry about demons but harassing us. After a thousand years have ended, the devil will be released and will gather his forces together to attack the camp of the saints. Why he's being released, I don't know uh, why God's going to release him, but he's going to be released. But it's going to be for a short time because fire is going to come down from heaven and devour his army. Because he got released and he tried to get up an army again to, to make war on the saints. Fire is going to come down from heaven and just devour his whole army. And this time the devil will be thrown into the lake that burns with fire to join the beast and the Antichrist where they will remain and be tormented forever. Then the great white throne judgment will be held. Now this is when the dead will rise, all the dead, great and small, and stand before God and answer and be judged according to their works listed in the books. So anything that you've done on, this is judgment day. This is really judgment day. This is after all this, all this tribulation, all this horrible stuff has taken place. Then everybody's going to be raised from the dead so that they can uh, answer to God for what they did while they were on this earth. So you, there's going to be a, 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 a reckoning. The book of life will be opened and everyone's name not found in the book of life will be thrown into the lake that burns with fire. So they're going to join, uh, join the devil and the Antichrist and the beast. John now beheld the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven up to the earth. And there was no more pain or sorrow or suffering for God's people. He who overcomes will inherit all things. And God warns that all cowards, all unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, those that worship idols, and all liars will have their part in the lake that burns with fire. Now that is the second death. And why is it the second death? Because remember, um, the first death is you, you can think of that maybe as your natural death. Everybody that dies in a natural way and is buried. Well, you're going to get resurrected so you can face your judgment day so God can talk to you about what you did on the earth. And then after you resurrected, if your name is not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, then this is going to be your second death. You're going to be thrown in the lake that burns with fire to be tormented forever with the devil and the Antichrist and the beast. So description of the New Jerusalem. This is what description of New Jerusalem is. It will be lit up like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, because it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. So this is, this is the description we're getting. It has a high wall with 12 gates with the names of the 12 tribes of children of Israel. Three gates on each side, north, south, east, and west. The walls had 12 foundations named after the 12 apostles. The wall measured 144 cubits and were made of jasper. Uh, the city was made of pure gold, clear as glass. All 12 foundations were covered with precious stones. The 12 gates were made of pearl. The streets were made of pure gold like transparent glass. And I know we've heard of those songs that the streets are made of gold in heaven. It's actually in the Bible. 
Revelation chapter 21. There is no temple there. This is talking about the new heaven and new earth. This is after, after the devil has been done away with and everybody's been judged. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And they explain this to us, what this is going to look like. There is no temple there for God is a temple. There is no need for the sun or the moon or to, to shine for God's glory lights up the city. Nations of people who are saved will be there. Kings of the earth will bring their glory and honor into it. It will never be night there. So it's going to be daytime all the time. The gates are opened all day. Kings of the earth will bring their glory and honor of nations will be able to enter the city. Nothing unclean may enter. And only those written in the Lamb's Book of Life will be admitted. How do you get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? You give your heart to Jesus. It's just that simple. You give your heart to Jesus. It only takes a moment. You give your heart to him. Father, forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. That gets your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that's where you want to be. You want to be in the Ark of Safety. And he'll clean you up. He'll clean up all, all the other things and all the shortcomings that we have. We don't even need to worry about that. We just need to worry about that he has my heart. You got my heart, Lord God. And, and anything that needs to be fixed, I know you, you're able to fix it. You give yourself to him. It says, there is a river of life flowing in the middle of the city. This new city, this new Jerusalem that we have now. And on either side of the river was a tree of life that bore 12 fruits every month. Their leaves were to be used for the healing of the nations. So after all the stuff we've went through, the nations are going to need to be healed. And there shall be no more curse. The curse is broken. What curse are we talking about? The curse that was Adam and Eve caused to come upon all mankind. The curse of sin. It's, it, it's going to be no more curse. They will serve the lamb. They're going to see his face. And his name will be on their forehead. His nature is going to be part of us. And they shall reign with him forever. Hallelujah. So in Revelation chapter 22, 12, it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. So it's going to happen, people. I just wanted to uh, read the events that's going to take place in Revelation so you will know what is going to happen, so you can be prepared uh, when he does come and you can be prepared to go back with him because we don't want to be in the lake that burns with fire. We don't want to be with the Antichrist and Satan and you know, to burn uh, in, in, in fires of hell to be tormented forever. We want to live with Jesus. We want to rule and reign with him. And in order to do that, you need to give your life to him. So if you've never given your heart to Jesus, I just implore you to go onto my channel and it'll give you even more explanation as to why you need to give your life to Jesus. There are two videos on a playlist uh, called The Sinner's Prayer. And there's another video called Teaching About Salvation. And in these videos, we give you an explanation as to why you need Jesus with all the scriptures about your salvation. So please, please, please go on my channel, read through the Bible, Elder Linda, review those videos so you can learn why you need Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we just wanted to go over the tribulation so you'll know what's coming up. Uh, and we're going to pick up chapter... 24 verse 15 next week. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And let's just close with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for all those listening. Oh God, I pray that, that the truth that you have and the warnings that you give us, that you're coming back and that no man knows the day or the hour. Father, that you would cause a fire to be in us, oh God, that we would hasten to you, that we would run to you, that we would cry out, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Lord, I know it's not your will that any should perish. Father, I pray that you stir up all the hearts that are listening to this video, those that will listen. Father, that you will convict their hearts and cause them to run to you. Cause them to know how much you love them, oh God. Cause them to know that you want all of us to be saved. You want all of us to come to you, Jesus. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we honor you, and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and I'll see you next week.